Wow, troll lore has been something that many just cannot get enough of these days. Today, we'll be taking a look at the troll tribes of the Garibashi, the Amani, and the Dark Spear. You may be surprised to find out just how rich of a history these trolls shared. Now, if you're coming into this, starting with this video, be sure to check out the other videos prior to this one above. The tribes had slowly rebuilt what they once had in smaller pieces. Centuries after the Great Sundran marked a horrible time of death and famine for the trolls, and the Garibashi worked desperately to make ends meet. Though the tribes all believed in the great pantheon of primitive gods, they fell to the sway of the most twisted one of all, Beloa, known as Hakar. Hakar had answered their calls and granting the trolls the secret of blood and helping them expand their territories throughout Stranglethorn. Though he brought great power to the Garibashi, he also required constant sacrifice each day and the demand slowly started to grow. The tribe's strongest rose up against the blood god. The priest had been shattered by these efforts and broken into smaller groups. However, they did escape by fleeing into the Swamp of Sorrows, uncharted and forced off of the capital of Zulgrub. They built a temple to worship among the ferns of the Swamp of Sorrows. <clears throat> Soon after a great civil war broke out within the torn tribes of the Garibashi. The Skull Splitters, Blood Scalp, and Dark Spear tribes set off to claim their own land while the prophecy of Hakar's return to the world had spread. The war against Hakar and the Garibashi had not been very well documented, but many stories had been told. The Garibashi were not the only tribe that had issues, though. The Amani had been slowly crept upon by elven kind. The Kaldora High Elves slowly advanced upon them, and the trolls had been overwhelmed. The two races clashed against each other which marked a new war within the history of Azeroth. The Amani tribe of Zulamon hadn't gathered themselves to a major war in thousands of years. The High Elves brought their newfound friends, their new allies, to the war, the humans. Many Amani troll did not survive, and many had died in battle or trying to flee. When the Horde landed upon Azeroth, trolls proved as a vital asset in fighting the humans and elves. Though the trolls were in no condition to fight, Orgrim Doomhammer found himself allied with the troll war hero Zul'jin, but abandoned the Horde when he did not send his forces against the enemy of the trolls. Now, the trolls didn't have much contact with the orcs until Thrall had left the land of the humans behind. Thrall and the chief of the Dark Spear tribe, Sinjin, had been captured by a sea witch and her murloc minions. In the dying breath of his new friend, Sinjin asked Thrall to take his people to a safety and swore the oath to the Horde. A pact but still is held to this day and was held for many years by Chieftain of the Dark Spear, Bulgin. Those who had not allied with the Horde were slowly sinking into solitude among many. Sanfury, Amani, and Garibashi licking their wounds while the Shatter Spear and the Raven Tusk joined the Horde quickly. 
Now, did I forget something that you feel should have made it into this video? Let me know in the comment section below. Remember to subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, this walk through the lore of the Great Troll Empire, let me know and give this video a thumbs up. But if not, then be sure to hit the other button instead. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.